let everybody in and we can still chat and <laughs> um, say hi and hello, everybody. I don't know. There they all are. Hey, y'all. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Almost Friday. <laughs> I gotta fix my computer, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Michelle, can you hear me? I love that. Look at that studio you have. Impressive. Nice, nice wall. Thank you. I don't get down here very often, but I am pretty lucky to have this. Is that your basement? It is. It was the deal I made with my husband. I was either getting a studio outside of the house or they were building me something here. So what, what did he get in exchange? <laughs> my wife gets at home sometimes. <laughs> a happy That's wife. Perfect. Yes, exactly. Hello, everyone. If you're just coming in. We're going to wait until about 10 after 7 to, to start. So you can grab whatever supplies you need or if you're just going to watch and then make it along another time, that's fine too. I see black boxes. I'm, I'm having like flashbacks to <laughs> last year remote teaching. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> But I know also, you know, as long as everybody's with that, with us, you probably have a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that nobody wants to well, It was weird when you asked me to do Zoom because I thought, oh, my God, what do I do? I forgot. Like, I did it for a year and a half. How could I forget it? Like, it's like trauma. I just blocked it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like riding a bike, unfortunately. Super easy. You Is know, everybody I'm, in New York? I'm in New York. I'm in New York. Hi, Risa. Hi, Seth. <laughs> I'm so glad to finally be here. <laughs> I know. We've had a few good ones. I don't know if any of you have been able to see the recordings that are on um, our YouTube channel, but we've had a really good couple of sessions. And I have one more coming next week um with jane she's gonna do more google stuff with us which is google draw which is like her specialty which will be fun and then i'm going to take a break till january i think yeah work is a little insane right now so is everybody's kids losing their minds before the vacation comes yes okay so it's not just me oh my goodness I'm in Michigan, so we also had the incident this week, which has added to the student conversation quite a bit. It wasn't your school, was it? No, I'm in Detroit Public School. Okay. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I don't know whose computer that is. Um, let me see. So, how was that conversation with your kids? Were they uh, what? What age do you teach? This was a high school class today. Uh, okay. We had the uh, lockdown drill, strangely enough, scheduled for the day it happened. Oh. Um, so, uh, and I didn't get notified <laughs> somehow. So um, that was really bizarre. Just on a bizarre note, but uh, it was a high school class. And it was a good conversation as well as ones where I took a risk and just kind of expressed myself to the class with the class. We were all sharing just kind of spontaneously happened today while they were, were working on some pine needle baskets. Oh, um, neat. Yeah. So it creates a lot of conversation, you know, good conversation while hands are busy. Type of right. Stuff. So we got, we just happened. It was nice. It was really nice. You know, it's always, it's not happening to you. It's somewhere else in the world. And then these things happen where it's like right in your backyard and it's a whole different thing. It's, it's, it's not like on TV anymore. It's now affecting you and the kids personally. And it's just crazy. 
Hello, is my voice going to work here for a minute? Yes, Nancy, we hear you. Hi. I'm, I'm an ex-art teacher. I still love art and I love to watch you young people with all of your challenges and, and programs. And uh, I have a lot of fabric and I thought maybe this little thing might give me something to do with, with all these fabric things that I have or Perfect. some place to give it off to. So I'm looking forward to spending some time with you um, especially since right now I'm experiencing my own personal isolation. I got COVID and I'm testing positive and my doctor oh my goodness. isolate. And I said, how long? And she said, until you get a negative test. And that could be three months or six months. I don't know. How are you feeling? I'm feeling absolutely fine. So it's, it's a crazy situation. And uh, I'm just sensitive to what the children went through that mm -hmm. whole year. I, I just didn't realize how awful it is to to isolate. <clears throat> so, so good luck to all of your uh, projects. They they keep them having at least art therapy uh, as they're as they are working towards uh, expressing their creativity and and making something pretty. As long as they let themselves do it. <laughs> yes. 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 Of course. <laughs> There's always that fear that says, oh, I will make a mistake and everybody will laugh at me or something. I don't know. Nobody's laughing. I don't know. But anyhow, thank you very much for making this available. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania <clears throat> and it's Pennsylvania. cold. Oh, yeah. It must be cold in Michigan right now, too. Yes, it must be. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> You know, Lee, I had somebody message me um, that they don't have plastic bags anymore because the stores stopped using them. So she's like, what can I use? And I thought, well, maybe either um, paper bags or um, would tin foil work? Or is it supposed to? Uh, paper bags would probably be a little bit too heavy. You could actually do this without um, the plastic bags. You could use trash bags. You could use... Um, anything that can replicate, and that's one of the reasons I do this, and I go over it with the kids, that this is actually a recycle project, because mm -hmm. um, we spend a lot of time in Florida, and when you turn the bag, oh, where's my bags, I have a whole bag, and I don't need, I, I'm, I'm horrible about this, I, I, I go, I buy all my, my um, reusable bags, you know, and then I get to the store and I forgot them. Me but, too. So <laughs> Mostly when we do this project, I ask for donations and we've like filled the room before. And it's just sad because if you notice, if you look at this bag as it's floating down in the water, it looks like a jellyfish or something yes. a fish might eat and they end up tangled in it or eating it. So we go over environmental issues, um, trying to go to get your parents to go to reusable bags. Um, I had a student do this from one of my after school classes and she actually won the recycled project for our county. Nice. We, we, were, we used to, I, my, I'm in, I was in Virginia, I'm in Georgia now, but we were right next to a dump. So <laughs> they had a recycle. So they always had a recycle contest every year. So she won with one of the scrappy animals. Oh, fantastic. That's great. That's great. Okay, it's almost, um, 10 after 7, so we have 22 people. That's a great number, not too many. Um, and I will say hello again, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night Art Teachers Club because we need a space to learn and make stuff together too. Um, I always have my, my eyes and ears on social media and chase down my favorite art projects and art teachers and, and stalk them to ask them to volunteer and teach their best lessons. So I'm very, very grateful that everyone in this group and all the facilitators who have done this in the past are so gracious and generous with their time. I know we're all busy and all tired, but this is really important for a sense of community and support for all of us. Um, you know, no, during normal circumstances, it's important, but now I think it's it's extra important because we in the arts are kind of an isolated little world of our own where not many people get us. <laughs> so um, it's important to stick together and, and I, I will keep doing this as long as you guys keep showing up. So I am, again, I'm grateful for 
facilitator volunteers, and I'm grateful for you supporters and members who keep showing up. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And today, as Lee was saying, it's a wonderful recycling, scrappy creatures or animals. I think I meant in my brain to type scrappy creatures and my fingers typed animals instead of what my brain was. That's, that's the kind of week that I've had. So anyway, they're, they're wonderful little creatures and I can't wait to see how you get these done and all the options we have. So I will turn it over to Lee, who is an art teacher. As she said, she used to be in um, Virginia and recently moved to the land of her dreams with her horses and amazing things and the but I'm sure it's a very relaxing lifestyle with hard work, but you know, you're doing what you love and, and that's everybody's goal. So um, I will hand it over to you. I'm going to spotlight you. Okay. Um, and I guess I will add the spot. You want me to split the screen or wait till you can, you can spotlight the creatures or. Um, well, I'll, I'll just introduce myself and then we can, can you, and then you can switch over there. Is that okay? Yeah. Just okay. let me know when to make the, which screen, the main spotlight and I'll take it off. Yeah. Take the other one off. Okay. So without further ado. Hi, I'm Lee Darter and I was in Virginia for 11 years. And before that I was in Texas. My husband was in the military. So that's why we move around a lot. And uh, he just recently retired. So we decided that we have family land in Georgia. I'm from Georgia. So we bought the family land. So with my son, it's been in our family for six generations, maybe longer. We're trying to look it up, but uh, I do have horses. So I get to combine going to school all day and teaching kids art and coming home and working with my horses, except I broke my leg two months ago. <laughs> so I'm sitting here with a metal titanium plate in my leg but I'll be walking soon but so yeah I do these scrappy animals uh, I do them for myself now but I actually learned them at a conference and that person learned it from somebody else who learned it from somebody else and along the way I've turned it around and made it my own which is like what I tell the kids is don't copy exactly good ideas from other artists and make it your own so that's what I've done um I teach elementary school, K through five, and I do this, some years I do it with fifth grade, depends on the fifth grade, how many there are, how they're acting. And then I also, uh, before I came to Georgia, I've only been in this school for a few months since the beginning of the year. And uh, so I don't know the kids as well. Plus we have a weird schedule. We have, we're in elementary school, but we do a nine week rotation. So it's a little difficult to do bigger projects, but um, I had an art club, so my art club did it. And um, so without further ado, some of the things that you, you want to switch over, Steph, to the, to the table? Sure. Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. So these are scrappy animals. And inside of them, there's the plastic bag. We also use a coat hanger for the armature. But you can actually do it without the armature. Uh, you just need to tape the plastic bag a little bit tighter, and I'll show you that in a few minutes when we get started. And then some material. Um, you can just use regular material. And what's interesting when you start doing this, just ask for donations. You'll be surprised. I've gotten more donations. Like, I have a whole bag of just plain material. Uh, if you're going to do, okay. it's just a crazy, Wait, crazy amount of project I have to do. Oh, oh. So if Sorry. you have, can you guys mute yourselves if you're not, um, asking a question that would be great thank you so yeah don't worry about oh i'm gonna have to go buy all this stuff i i ask for donations and and now that i do it a lot people just give me stuff i have right down here at my side i have a big bag somebody gave me at the virginia conference uh last month so um uh, if you're gonna do it it's two and a half inch by 40 inch is what seems to work best but now that i'm doing it a lot for myself i cheat and i don't know if you know what a jelly roll is if you're a quilter, you probably know what a jelly roll is, but it's long strips like this that come with matching colors, so you don't even have to think about it. So now that I do it a lot, I actually use the jelly roll strips, and it comes in already pre-cut. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. 
So I use that, but you can use any material. Um, this is Pedro. He's the first one I ever made and I cut him from little pieces <laughs> of material. So if you notice, they all have character. And what I tell my kids when you get started is don't go for anything, like to clear your mind. I'm not trying to create uh, a donkey or a giraffe or anything like that. So I, that's why we call them creatures because we don't want any pre-planning going on. It's just free form, kind of go with your gut. What's, it, what's the piece telling me it wants to be? Um, then you'll need some string. So you'll notice the string you can use. I can, I sometimes I, I just get whatever's on sale. This one is just kite string. I don't even know what that is. It's string, or you could use, um, this is from Friendship Bracelets. You could use oh, any kind of string. Yeah. Yeah. Any, I actually use this kind of string when I do book binding. I just wax it because it like, comes in so many colors and it's cheaper than buying free wax. Um, and then uh, just random stuff. Like somebody gave me these random things. I need, like used to, before I started doing this, I thought, oh, what is this? I'll never use that. That's so hideous. Now it's perfect. <laughs> just like, oh. That's the greatest thing ever. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby one time. They were having a clearance and I got this entire thing for, yes, that is correct, a dollar. Can you see it? Wow. $1.35. So when I go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's or any place like that, I hit the, I hit the um, half price bin. Um, so any, oh, I also felt, and I went to a uh, uh, felting or a, wool and sheep convention and I bought this big bag of curly haired lamb wool sheep wool I'm not even sure what it is maybe it says what it is uh it doesn't say but it was a huge bag of stuff and I thought that would make some great felting creatures or some scrappy hair something if you want to play along at home you will need a coat hanger and of course, Seth said this is recorded, so you can definitely go back and watch it when you have all your supplies together. Um, wire coat hangers. Now, everybody used to have wire coat hangers, and I could get some from the dry cleaners, but then after a while, it was hard to get them. And some people bring those really heavy-duty ones that you hang a coat, a real coat on, and they're hard to bend and the kids whine. So I actually started ordering these um, from Amazon, and you get a huge, gigantic box for like 20 bucks. So I get a hundred for 20 bucks and they're, they're thin, they're very thin and they've been very easily. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to show you and I'm going to do a couple variations. So you just start off with your coat hanger. And if I'm going to, if you're playing along at home and you're, I'm going too fast, just let me know. So I'm going to take the coat hanger, I'm going to hold it by the top and I'm going to put a finger at the bottom and I'm just going to pull it like you would pull a bow and arrow. And then I'm going to just going to go through and straighten it out. And I definitely want to see these. I don't know where you post these stuff afterwards, but I would love to see everybody's scrappy creature. So I've just kind of straightened it out here, as you can see. And then I take the top and I kind of do a little straightening on it. I, I kind of let it do its own thing up there. Now here's the hardest part for the kids because their little hands have a hard, hard time doing it. So this, sometimes I have to help them. You're gonna take your hand and hold it right below the neck. So where the coat hanger top was, where it hangs on the hook. I'm gonna put my hand there and I'm gonna take the bottom part and fold it up just like that. And then I'm gonna hold that together. So I just moved my hand from here to over here. And then I'm gonna bend it down. And then I'm gonna hold that too. So you can tell this might be a little bit hard for their little big hands to hold it all. High schoolers could do this easy, middle schoolers. My art club did fine. So I went from here to here. Now I'm going to here and I'm gonna bend it up. And that's basically it. And you kind of see that it's form right now. These are gonna be his front legs. These are gonna be his back legs. This can be his uh, head and this can be his tail or you can reverse it. This can be his head and this can be his tail. So I just tell him to play along with it, let the wire tell you what it wants to be. So I'm going to bend it apart just like this so he stands up. Now 
this is where I go with my kids now, as a as an adult class or um, <coughs> a, an older class, a, a high school class. You could actually make it bigger. So this is the exact same thing. He's got his frame. He's actually he's he's this way. So his frame is inside there, but I've taken an extra coat hanger and used some wire cutters right here. And I've actually cut part of the wire up and made extra long legs. So you can do that. On Pedro, he's actually the same thing. He's right here. He's, his head's been up. He's sitting down like this. Um, but then I went and cut off some extra wire and gave him some antlers. So you can definitely do that if you have an older crowd, but if you just wanna, if you have a younger crowd, or if you just want to keep it simple, just stick to one coat hanger like that. So we're here. Now, the next thing you do is the hardest and the longest part. And this actually takes an entire, an entire, if you're doing this for a class, it takes the entire class. So what I do with my bag is I take it from the corner. The opened end is away. I'm going to kind of squeeze all the air out and I just take it with my finger and I start twisting it around. So I'm twisting and twisting. So I'm making kind of like a rope, just like this. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is the most difficult part, especially with little kids because their hands are little. I'm gonna use some uh, masking tape. And I actually have my kids, and even for myself when I'm making them at home, I take mat little pieces of masking tape and I line, you can't see what I'm doing, but I line them across my table so that they're ready to go. Because it's just kind of hard to hold all this together. When I learned how to do it, she goes, oh, you just need a piece of string and it'll all tie together. I'm like, I am not that coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I've got a few here and you're gonna start at your tail. So I'm just gonna take a piece of tape and I haven't 100% decided that's actually the tail, but you're just going to start one of the ends. For right now, I'm assuming that's the tail. And I'm just going to start wrapping it around and around. And then you tape it in place. And of course, you just continue that. Now, when you get to the legs, you're going to do each of the legs individually. So I have four legs. So I'm going to go down the four legs. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I lost my big bag. We have a, a picture of my, one of my clubs that got, we got so many bags, we made the news because they were just bags covered the entire floor. So I'm twisting it. Just like this. And then wherever I started from, I just tape it there. Now what I mean about going down the legs, so I've got two legs here. I'm just gonna pick one of the legs and I'm just gonna start wrapping down one of the legs. And I'm gonna tape that. And then I'm just gonna keep going. This is the most time consuming part. So some alternatives, anything that you can think of, you could actually use some old cloth to do this. Some that you may not think, oh, that's that's not a cute piece of cloth. Well, you can make it the stuffing for your scrappy cute creature. So you said trash bags would work too, right? Trash bags would work too. And I might be a little big. You might want to cut them up. Uh huh. Because this is a really good size to work with. Just the um, the the. Um, Grocery store bags. Now I know that some places, I know California, they can't do grocery store bags. I was hoping Florida would go to that too because we go to the beach where my son lives a lot and they ban plastic straws to protect the turtles, but they, which nobody can drink out of because they collapse, but yet they still use gar uh, grocery store bags, which is worse. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So um, if you notice one stick or the other, that's okay. That's part of his personality. We can fix it or we can leave it. You're letting that, you are letting this piece tell you what it wants to be. That I keep telling that to the kids. Don't try to force it. Let it tell you what it wants to be. I need, hang on, I need a husband request. Baby, 
Robert? I don't know where he went. Yes. Oh, can you turn the heater off, please? It's 75 degrees here and 75 inside the house. I, I'm not used to, I'm, I'm glad we moved to Georgia because I don't like cold, but I'm not used to it, the heat yet. <laughs> um, okay, keep going. I can't, I've gotten to the point in my life where I can't talk and work at the same time. So again, I'm just twisting. Now I'm wrapping it across his back where it came together at the top, kind of like his camel back. And then I'm going to do the other two legs individually. I'm going fairly quickly on this one. When I do them at home, as you notice the size difference, when I do them for myself, I kind of add to them, fluff them up. But this, 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 is, this is Pedro. I mean, Pedro's got the same exact armature inside of him. So you can do a lot with just this piece. About how many bags? Is it like six, seven, depending um, on what you add no, to it? I knew that question a year ago. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for the armature. And then if you want to add like a bump or something, I would say 10 to be safe if you're going with this size. Okay. And the, of course, the bigger you get, the more you'll need. Right. And you can actually do it without the armature, without the um, coat hanger. You just use more bags. And you, and you wrap them tighter. Okay. This way, it's just a little more stable, I believe. The other one's kind of soft. But if you want to give it to a child as a toy, I would definitely not have the wire. Well, you probably shouldn't have bags in there either. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think of it. But I tell people that buy them, I said, this is not a child's toy. There's bags inside. Plus, it's my art. Right. How many are working along with this? It's a good question. Is there anybody working along or are we all watching? And Nancy, I see your hands moving. What are you doing? I'm doing it. Yay. All right. So now I noticed that this one is really big. It's longer and thicker than the other ones were. Oh, you'll also become a bag connoisseur. You're like, I don't want that bag. <laughs> There's a grocery store called Wegmans. I don't know if y'all have that in Virginia. Uh, we had it in Virginia. But they had the uh, toughest bags. Nobody wanted. No, they don't want that one. Uh, Target bags are good. But anyway, this one's, this is an Ace hardware. And it's harder because they have to put all the hardware stuff in it. So I don't want to put it in this tiny little spot. So it teaches kids how to, you know, mentally place things. So I'm going to use this one for its tail or whatever this piece is going to be here because it's much thicker and longer. We have, I'm in, in New York, Target has their like fiber bags, not plastic. Mm -hmm. um, those might work well as well. Anything that you can twist or manipulate. Paper bags might be a little tough. You might have to soften up. Let's say to rip and tear. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you should try anything. Try anything once, is my motto. Like falling off a horse <laughs> and breaking your leg. Sure, let's try that now. <laughs> well, don't, not, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, not going to do that one again. Here's a Wawa bag. I don't shop at Wawa, so this must be from my, do my donated collection. So uh, this somebody one's mentioned uh, instead of wire hanger, perhaps rolled newsprint tape together might work as an armature. Yes, you could definitely use that. That would be great. Okay. You would still need something soft and fluffy to toughen it up a little bit so it doesn't collapse on you. Right. So this one was soft and small, so I'm going to use that for its foot. Oh, I knocked somebody over. Man down, man down. <laughs> Yeah, definitely throw out some questions if you have them. I can't um, see them. All. I can't see them when I'm working, but you can just raise your hand and I can answer them for you if you have them. I can, read, I can read them out to you. Uh, any Michelle asks if anyone tried t-shirt yarn. You deconstruct t-shirts into strips of fabric. She says. Um, I actually have some of that, Robert. 
<laughs> Travis, like, I am not your errand boy. <laughs> Can you, there, it, right in the, my studio, inside my studio to the left, there's a spool of, um, of fabric yarn. If you go in the studio and you look to the left on the top, there's a big spool of fabric yarn. Will you grab that? Lisa, I think Lisa, you did this with fi uh, fifth graders, right? I've, do I've done it with fifth graders. Not all my fifth graders. Some of them are too big. Because in, in Virginia, there's no size limit on fifth, gr on fifth grade. You could have 40. Um, so it depends oh, on the size. size, not child size. <laughs> oh, yeah. They could be 40 years old. It's still yeah. Like <laughs> no. Total in the class. Right. Um, it's interesting now because I'm in a Title I school and um, the size is very limited. We can't have more than 20 in a class. Oh, that's so it's like, nice. I know. It's like, wait, what do I do with all these other spaces? Right. <laughs> so uh, this is something that I make. It's it's a uh, fabric and t-shirt yarn. And you weave it together. I don't know if you can see that real well. Can I hold it up? You and did a workshop with that last summer, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I did it in the woods in Tennessee when I was visiting Cassie Stevens. Right. I remember that. But yeah, you could do that. But yeah, old t-shirts, just, just tear them up and stuff them in there if you don't have plastic bags. I'm glad people don't have plastic bags because they're not great. They're bad. I, I'm I'm just as I'm just as guilty because I, I I have all of my cloth bags in the car and I forget I get to the I get to the check and go oh my god I forgot my bags and if they didn't it, the thing is like in New York you don't even have the option but if they wouldn't give me the option I would be much better of doing it I know I end up putting all the food loose back in the cart and then bagging it myself in the parking lot because I leave my bags in the car oh, that makes so y'all don't have plastic bags at all, right? Um, not in Queens, at least not in my area. They're either doing the, they went back to the old paper bags or you have to buy the recycled bags and bring them back and forth yourself. All right, so I've got him all wrapped up here and I noticed there's a little hole right here so I can just find a smaller bag, nothing, no Ace Hardware bag. And I could stuff it in there and tape that down. Of course, I ran out of tape. Now I'm having to show you that I'm not coordinated. And now I've got to kind of make a decision. I kind of have to look at him and say, what are you telling me? Where's your face? And I, I want to say here, but I kind of like here. I like the way he's looking sideways almost. Oh, you just I do. Yeah. And it's, it's not tough, but it gave me an idea. It gave me a spark of inspiration. I'd have to add on some ears here, but we can do that. I'm going to go back and tape down anything that's right here that's unraveling on me. Now, here's the fun part. You're going to pick your colors. So I'm going to set him aside. Clear my space. When I'm doing this, my area turns into a hot mess. Oh, okay. We can all relate to that. I have this big bucket coming through. Hello, big bucket. I'm stuck. Oh, wow. How fun. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm going to start pulling out some colors that, that uh, my friend here thinks he wants to be and trying to match some things up. And you, it takes about maybe six strips. Somewhere around there. Depends on the size, of course. This one probably won't take six because he's not very big. But you can, I try to get him to match colors in the same value or just randomness. I like to let him, let him play with it, see what looks good together. What my friend over here is telling me, he's telling me he's not a light color. So this is out. He's not a fancy animal. He is a, I'm thinking some blues here might work. I'm feeling this here. That's too much. What about this? Oh, 
No. And at first, it's kind of like, well, I don't have a very good selection, but you will. It'll come. Just ask for donations. You'll be surprised what you get. I wonder if Joanne donates. No seagulls. No. Um, I haven't found any place to donate yet, but Joanne's, um, not Joanne's, but Hobby Lobby has a really, they have very deep discounts on their fabric. But you will be unbelievably surprised at how much stuff you will get donated. Stuff will start showing up in your dreams. That's a little off, but I kind of I kind of like it. I'm gonna go with that. Yes, Kelly, those are about two inches, I think, right? They're, yeah, they're, yeah, the the jelly rolls. I think they're. Uh, of course, I have everything on the planet except a ruler over here because <laughs> I never measure anything. I just kind of go. Oh, I just knocked somebody off the table. Wait, I found a ruler. I can tell you exactly. Lisa, they that's are, a good idea. She said, check with a local quilting guild to see if members would donate scraps. That is absolutely a good idea. And that's who I got this from. I got it from a quilter who said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I got a huge bag of it while we were at conference. Fantastic. So I've got some colors. It's, they're two and a half inches. A jelly roll is two and a half by 40 inches. Um, Usually with the kids, I pre-cut them because it's just really hard for them to cut material. And get yourself a really good pair of a fabric scissors to do it with, or else you'll be miserable. And now, now for myself when I'm doing this, I actually hot glue gun the, the uh, ends together. But for the kids, I can't do that. I can't sit there and hot glue 40 pieces together. So um, I have them tape it. And you're either going to be able to pull the tape off, the masking tape off when you get to the end, or you'll hide it so it won't matter. So I'm going to start at the end, and I'm actually going to let it hang over just a little bit. It's not all the way to the end. That way I can tuck it around. So I'm going to put it on there, and then I'm going to start wrapping tightly. And I'm just going to keep wrapping. And sometimes they have to work in pairs to help do this, but it, it uh, works out. And I'm going to wrap down, just like we did the bags, I'm going to wrap down the tail. And then I'm going to wrap down one leg. And I'm going to wrap and you're going to have to get creative with your wrapping. So it's random. We're not going for a pattern. It's just whatever happens, happens. So I had to crisscross over the back. Yours is absolutely going to look different than mine. It's just whatever works with whatever you're doing. Pulling it tight helps. I tell the kids pulling it really tight and having your uh, tape out beforehand, which obviously I haven't done, helps. I'm going to tape that in place. And then um, I think I'm going to stay with the same color for now. No, I'm not. I'm going to switch colors because he's not very big. One piece covers a lot of ground. Yeah, if you're going to do this with kids, definitely pre-cut. I The first year I let the kids cut their own and oh my god we were there for weeks it felt like and a week of week of cutting. So now I'm wrapping down the other leg and as you notice I left a little hanging over here because I'm going to hot glue that down or with the kids you can just have them tape it down in place. Those are so cute. We have some great ideas going on in the chat. Um, awesome. Jackson had asked any ideas for adapting to older groups, perhaps a question for the end reflection. And Brianna writes, writing a quick story about the character and maybe illustrate. 
Um, Kathleen says, great ideas, perhaps have younger illustrate and write main characteristics and older collaborative artists make them for the students and perform a story. Did we lose Lee? No. Yes. Lee? Um, I'll wait for her to come back. Well, thanks you guys for sharing ideas. Those are great. I think we lost, yeah, Lee, um, you disappeared. Well, one of your devices disappeared. I see you standing. Um, we post, well, I will post by the end of the weekend, the recorded video will be on YouTube on the Nikata UFT channel. Um, you know what I'll do? I could see if I can put the link in the chat box for everybody. Let me see if I can get there. Sorry, I lost you for a second. I had a spam caller. Oh. Hey, Okay. So for uh, older kids, I would uh, um, add more stuff on it, like adding, like on Pedro, how I added the antlers on him. Have him add that in there. That way you're using... Hi, uh, everybody. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to find the... Um, the channel to link everybody for watching it later. And so you notice here at the end, I've left a little, you can stick my finger down in there because I'm going to fold it over and we can tape it shut like that, or we can hot glue gun it depending on your age group. I'm going to switch to another color. And I think since I'm going to add this, make this his head and put ears on it, I'm going to add a, one more bag up there just to make it a little thicker for a head. So you can still, you can start to tell his personality is coming to life now. But don't, don't name him. Don't, don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> he, he's still, he's still talking to me. Still trying to tell me. Here. Now I'll probably put some ears on him too. Were there any other questions or one that I missed? It's hard to do the chat and do art. I'm time. reading them aloud for you. Oh, great. Um, so we had everybody chatting about how to expand on this for older students. Perfect. And we came up with um, writing a story, um, creating a narrative and characteristics of the character that you make, um, other than just a basic reflection to, to try to, you know, stretch it out a little bit more. Definitely, if you're going to write a character background, do your character first and then write. Because if you're trying to create a character, it's tough. It makes it really difficult because people are trying to pick colors. They're trying to pick shapes. They're trying to make it look like what they already have in their head instead of letting it speak to them. I learned that the hard way. So just having them uh, let it talk to them is a little bit easier. And then maybe write your story afterwards. But I like that idea, though. Um, getting, my, getting mine to write a sentence is like, Miss Darter, this is art, not writing. Oops. Spotlight. There we go. I thought it was spotlighted. Sorry. Um, Jackson says he's thinking to make it a gift for a younger sibling as an outcome as well as the character response writing. That's cute. That is cute. Yeah. I did in my old school that I just left, we did um, at the end of the year when they were finished with all their projects, fifth grade would draw, oh no, kindergarten would draw a monster and on a big uh, 12 by 18 sheet of paper. And I wouldn't tell them what we were gonna do with it. And then fifth grade would get felt 
and I'd show them how to sew stuffed animals. So on the last day, they would go to the kindergarten class and give away the one that they made to their person who drew that. I love and it that. Was it was fun. And then, of course, they had the skills that so they could go home and make one on their own. So I gave them a list of things, materials they needed so their parents could get all the stuff for them. And it's just, it was just simple felt that you could get at Michael's. Kelly just made an amazing suggestion. She said they could be compared to Oaxacan alejibres, um, alebrijes, sorry, uh, the, and the Dream Carver book would work. So if anybody's familiar with the alebrijes, which are the, um, the, the dream spirit animals from um, Oaxaca. Uh, Oaxaca and Day of the Dead, um, that could definitely work also. I, we have a Oaxaca animal. I couldn't tell you where it is right now because we still have, since I broke my leg right after we moved here, I haven't really unpacked anything yet. So I couldn't yeah. really tell you where it is. So, okay, now... I have my animal ready. He's looking a little rough right now, but we're going to tighten him up right now. So I'm going to start pulling, like a little plastic is showing here. So I'm going to tuck him back. I'm just looking for little places that I can cover up. Right here, it's folded over. I'm just tucking that in, kind of tucking him in there. And I have all my openings. They're still open. So he's looking like little mummy. But with the string, we're going to tighten him up. So what I do is I try to match up the string some degree. Um, some color combinations that might work. I think I'm just going to go this one because it's out and it's easy. And oh, Lisa says worry dolls from Guatemala too. Oh, I don't, I don't know about those. Usually they're <laughs> super tiny, but you can make them like giant size. That would be a good idea. That's actually great. It, it, I don't know if it's, if it's the, the, the buzzword in everybody else's states, but in New York this year, SEL, you know, social emotional learning is the big thing. Exactly. SEL buddies, Kathleen. Perfect. You could, I mean, all these kids have so many social emotional issues. They can make their own worry doll and carry it around and, you know, almost like project all their stuff onto it which would be a fantastic that is, idea that is actually cool yeah. so now if you want you can i don't have my little kids of course bigger kids could do this i'm going to just put a you can have them actually tape it so what i do is i just fold it over here let's see if i can get you to be able to see that fold it over and then fold it back and they tape it in place so if you don't want to use a glue gun, you don't have to. You can just tape it there and the string will hold it down. I glue mine, my personal ones. I don't glue them with the kids. And I do the same thing. I just put a little glue there, put a little glue there, fold it over. Don't burn yourself. I think that my fingers are numb now because <laughs> so many I, burn my, yeah. <laughs> I have no feeling. Ooh, I don't, I don't know if everybody, anybody there has been fortunate enough to have a broken something or other, but um, they put a nerve block during the operation in my leg so I wouldn't be in pain the first few days. It is the weirdest feeling in the world. It's like, I can see my leg. <laughs> I don't feel it. That's weird. That is weird. Kathleen suggested do an adopt a pet function. <gasps> oh, I love that. Maybe a fundraiser for a local animal shelter. Oh, that's a cute idea. Now, it's kind of going against what I've just been saying about making it, but you could do an abstract version of your animal that you've adopted, or you could, we had um, the pet shelter by our school. We didn't do it, but one of the other elementary schools in our district would go to the elementary, or go to the pet shelter and they would take photographs and then the kids would draw or paint pictures of them. And then they would auction those off to raise money for the animal shelter. Kathleen, so you were full of amazing ideas. She said, have the students like a fortune cookie before it's all sealed up, place a message inside of the, the creature. That's a good idea. I 
I have learned to use the end of the glue gun instead of my finger. <laughs> it's a very good idea. It only took 17 years to say, oh, yeah, this makes much more sense. Um, somebody so, asked, do you add the extra wires on before wrapping with plastic? And what about if you want to add something after fabric? Uh, we're going to do after fabric in about two minutes. Okay. So if you want to add on like bigger ears or wings or whatever, you would use a, a pliers or something to add the, the wire? So what I do is I just take one of the coat hangers my wire cutters and say I, and I do I add parts on with my adults or my bigger kids um, as we're doing the plastic wrap before before we put the material on okay now do you twist it or just tape it on um I I shape it and then I tape it on and then I wrap plastic bags around it okay so you're not like trying to wrap the wire around itself to, no. okay. So say if I wanted to add ears to this guy, I would just take it, put it in the shape that I wanted it, like kind of kinky like that off to the side. And before I put the material on, I would tape it in place. Uh -huh. And then just like I did the legs, I would wrap plastic bags around it. Now, when you get to fine details like that, like a small ear or something, um, you can, I actually cut the plastic bag in half. So it's very much smaller. I didn't say that right. It's much smaller, not yes. very much smaller. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I'm ready. I got my ends glued down. Oh, I didn't get my face glued down, did I? And like I said, you can do it with tape just as easy. And it's very, very easy just after you put the string on to pull the tape out. And I'll show you that in a minute. Smush his little nose down. And so now I'm just going to usually I, take for you in the classroom. How long does the project take? Um, three rotations or with art club, uh, they go a little longer so they can do it in two. Plus they catch on to things a little faster. Okay. So if we had like, my sessions are like 43 and a half minutes. Um, I'm thinking. Under 45. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You go 45? Mm-hmm. So three. you said three sessions and they would be done? That's three sessions with just working. We do a, a, a first session with uh, talking about it, uh, getting our materials ready, um, talking about how to use the materials, uh, a little demonstration on how to use the materials, and then three full days of three full 45 minutes of actual work time. All right, so I start at the end on its tail. And I just tied it on, and now I'm just going to start wrapping it around. And like again, like I, ugh, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> like I said before, there's no rhyme or reason to this. You're just wrapping and pulling it tight. You're binding it together. So as you see, I'm not. I've got no pattern whatsoever. And part of its charm is the string. So don't worry about having a lot of string showing. Someone says that this connects, Robin says this connects to the work of Judith Scott. Oh, I'll have to look at that. Yeah, I was writing it down to look it up myself. Judith Scott. Okay. There are a lot of un, um, un, what's the very not known fabulous fiber artists out there. So this is a great place to start introducing fiber artists. You'll be surprised once you start, because you know, we don't, we usually go with the Picassos and the Van Goghs. This is a great place to get some modern artists, current working artists. Yeah, I'm so bored with the classics and a lot of the kids find it hard to relate to them. So I, I'm always looking for new stuff. Um, Risa asked if you could wrap with yarn instead of string. Yeah. I do have some kids that like to use yarn better. The only thing about yarn is, for some reason, make sure that, well, like, you can't really tell what you get, but with, a, like, acrylic and nylon, it um, kind of burns their fingers when they pull it. But, yeah, you can absolutely do that. 
I sometimes leave my strings on. Sometimes I cut them off. It just depends on where my head's at. I like having a little fluff. I don't know if you can see that like that. Just a little hanging off. And then you just tie it off and you can switch strings. You can switch colors. You don't have to keep using the same one. I um, It's easier to pull it off and then to work on the thing. Uh, for me, when I'm working myself, I just let the spool go to the ground and just let it unravel. But with the kids, just give them a, some, a little bit. And you don't have to tie it together. You just tie it back onto the animal, the creature. So you don't have to worry about tying two strings together. Because mm -hmm. that's always fun, right? <laughs> Kids have a hard time with knots. So from the tail, just the same way I did the bags and the material, I'm going to start down one leg and then go to the other leg, get his, get his booty. So I'll start to notice places that I either need to glue or tape, depending on what you're working with or you feel comfortable with. But as you pull it tight, as you put the binding around it, you'll notice that it starts to really get some character going. I'm going to go across his back and then down a leg. And I've discovered a cool way to tie a knot. Some of y'all might already know this, but it took me a million years to figure this out. When you get towards the end, I'm going to show you an interesting knot or way to tie when you're tying on like this to make it really tight. So what I do is it's across like this, and I pull it back. So it's double on one side and single on one the other side. And then I just tie that the same way you would tie a knot, like a shoe, together and it doesn't slip and it stays really tight. And I can show you again. Um, all of a sudden my hand just did it one day and I went, why haven't I been doing this my entire life? <laughs> but it doesn't slip. It's a lot easier to put on there. That is looking so cute. That, yeah, it's starting to get a face, a body, a character. So Robin asked, do you hide the knots? Nope. I don't. I mean, you can't. It's your piece. You can do whatever you want to. But see, I have it showing. That's part of his character. I leave the string sometimes just hanging out. It's a good way, too, for kids that are like, oh, I've got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. Well, this can't be perfect. Look at it. I mean, it's just, it's perfectly imperfect. Yes. So it kind of gives some freedom, especially the kids that are just uptight when they start doing their work. They have to like relax and go with it and let it tell you. And I just say that over and over again. Let it tell you what it wants to be. Let it tell you where it wants to go. She wants to know, how do you add trimmings like fringe with Elmer's glue or the hot glue? Or um, tacky? I, the, tacky? I, I tacky glue, yeah. I use um, for the kids. I use um, fiber glue, tacky glue. Okay. So I'm going down the leg. I'm going to go back over. We're almost done with the string. Get that leg again. Go up on his neck. Do a sweet little face. I have developed a huge knot right there. And I don't want to take the time. It's part of his character. It's staying. If it, your kids, if it gets knotted up, just tell the kids, just keep on going. Just keep on going, keep on going. <laughs> it's fun if, doing elementary. Could obviously you could cover it up with trimmings later, too. Absolutely. You can cover it up with trimming. Now, I just want to do his face a little bit because I lost some space when I did that knot. So just put a little more. Now, um, like I showed you, I had that big bag of trimmings. I'm going to start going in there. You can make things match. You can make it not match. You can make it crazy as you want to. This little guy's got, let's see, he's got fringe and bead and feathers. He's got pom-pom eyeballs. <laughs> so cute. 
had a whole bunch more. I actually sold them at BAEA when we or, uh, when we had our conference at the <laughs> artist gallery. I think his nose needs to be a little, I'm pulling it extra, extra tight up front because I want him to have like a, a piggy nose. It just told me just now that that's what he needed. <laughs> so you can kind of see his little piggy nose sticking out. Yeah. All right. So now I've got him all finished. I'll show you that knot that I, I do now that I've learned it. Pull from one side. Okay. It's straight across. So I'm going to pull to one side so that there's, there's two on this side, one on this side. And then you just tie those together in a regular knot. And it's so much easier than whatever it was I was doing before. It was so traumatic that I can't even remember what I was doing before. All right, so I'm going to move on over here to my, I can't stand up. <laughs> I'm going to try to stand up. Don't watch this. <laughs> Careful. It's not pretty. I'm going to move over here to my I got a bag of buttons. And then that's, you, that was not pretty. Sorry. Can you lay him down on his side so we can see what sure. his shape is? Is that, is that yeah. better? There, yeah, look at that. Got a big right, little so push. <laughs> so I'm going to move in real quick and show you this. Random. Oh my goodness. Cat. So I'm going to dig through there. And of course you, you know, use whatever. See, I have some yarn. I saw this yarn and I thought that would make it, that would have looked good on him, which I'd seen that sooner. Um, I, I always get inspired because, oh, I should have used this on him. Well, I got to make another one now. I found this yarn. It made, it's made great mane. So I'm going to look through my random thing of stuff. This is usually what I take to school. This, sometimes giving them too much is like overload. Here's some purple sparkly that'll look good on them, I think. You might be telling me that's a little over the top. Pom poms. Let's see what we got in here. What will look good on here? A fuzzy pink. Pom pom. Some. He definitely needs whatever that is. <laughs> this is the fun part. This is my favorite part. Just finding random stuff that stick on him. Oh, this is cool. Nice. All right. So I like this too. I think I'm gonna go with this. And you can use the fabric glue, the tacky glue. You can use I think I'm gonna go with some. I'm gonna jazz him up. I think he needs this in his life. Since I have the glue gun out, I'm just gonna use that. Although I just unplugged my glue gun. My worst problem, and y'all can probably help me out here. I don't know. You probably do it too. You're probably much cleaner than I am. But when I done it, when I'm done with the, I like I, I dump all my heart and soul into my art project, and I could work for hours and hours and hours. And then when you're done, you're done. You just walk away, and like I come back a couple days later, and the the, the remnants of everything is everywhere. I'm like, why didn't I clean that up? <laughs> it's the fallout from the creative explosion. So I'm giving him a little mane. Here, I'm going to put him sideways. Oh, that's so cute. I think I'm going to go down his back and down his tail. Um, I think I may have the world's largest collection of buttons. This is just a drop of the iceberg here. Tip of the iceberg. Drop in the bucket. I guess I just combined two things. You can make them match. You can make them totally different. I think he needs this pink. 
diamond oh, thing. So it's so cute. I take I take the backs off of them. I just cut them off. It's easier to put them on. So there's his eye. Uh, now the last step, well, there's one step before. Um, see how easy it is just to peel the tape off? Just comes right off. If you feel like you need to put more string on, you can still do that. I feel like I might want to put a little more string. And I've put um, string over the mane, like on Pedro here. I just felt like after I put his mane on, he needed more string. So I put his mane on and you can kind of see the mate, the string goes through. So I added that on there. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no uh, direct, straight directions like do this. Now do step two. Now do step three. So it's whatever you want it to be. You know, sometimes the kids get, they don't know what to do with so much freedom. You know, it's like they, they either really need the, the, I don't know, rigid set of instructions. Cause when you tell them do whatever you want, they don't know what to do. Yeah, for this, I mean, there is a basic set of instructions like how to wrap and how to do that. But when it comes to putting the string on, putting the colors on, that's, and I did notice like when I'm doing, oh, look at this. I don't know what, I have no idea what that is. Somebody might know, but I, that might be good for an eye over here. I, you'd be surprised the things that I pick up now. My husband, now he's like, oh, do you want to save this? And even got people at my new school, oh, we have these old phones we're throwing out. Do you want them? I said, absolutely. <laughs> I would have, I would rather take stuff people are giving me and not use it than want it and not have it. Yep. A little purple eye on top. No, I, want, I want pink to match the other eye. So that is basically it. You can, the one thing I've told you, the kids are pretty good about it because at this point they're kind of losing interest. They just want it to be done and take it home and show it off or put it in the window or something. We have big display windows. But with the adults, I kind of have to tell them less is more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or it just can get turned into a hot carnival mess with pom-poms and things hanging all over her. I would like to find some ears for them, but I, there, nothing that I have is speaking to me about ears. So I'm gonna wait until I can find something. Um, cute little nose. I got these teeny tiny itsy bitsy little bitty. I can find another one that would be perfect. Maybe some nostrils. There's so many directions you could take it in from here. Oh, I found one. Little pink nose. Oh my so gosh. Kinda, I'll try to show him off. I'm going to put a little pink nose on there. This is where he's at right now. He's telling me he needs more string and ears. Now, the last step is to name him. You look at him and you don't have to name it right away if the name doesn't come to you. And they can be crazy Dr. Seuss made up weird names. And the weirder, the better. So I've got, this is Pedro. This is Delilah. I have Samson. Samson's over on the other side of the room. I can't get him right now. So Samson and Delilah go together. Um, just whatever weird combination of, just now when I was saying that, Whistle came to mind. So I'm going to name him Whistle. So I got, I get the kids to get some, some kind of, little tag, little piece of paper, creative paper. They can paint their own tags. Um, so I'm gonna write his name, which is Whistle. And you write the day he was born. So he was born today, 12, two, 21. And then I just get a piece of string and I hang it around his neck. So like, here's, here's Delilah's. She was born 9, 27, 19. That's you can fantastic. see her. Fantastic. I don't know why it just came, whistle came to me. There usually they come to me pretty fast. There's been a couple of times where I stressed about two days before the name came to me. Whistle just came into the, my mind. So, without his ears, here is whistle. Well, and then I, I put it on my Facebook page, and my Instagram, and my blog, and I say, "Welcome to the world, whistle, born twelve twenty one, twelve two twenty one." Aww. 
I love this. And that's it. Easy peasy. I do have a blog. I, I, I got to be honest, I haven't updated it because of my leg. I just, you think being in bed 24 hours a day would give you a lot of time to do stuff, but it really doesn't. Um, it takes a lot to grow a bone back together. Yeah. But um, yeah, I have a blog if you want to look at it. I have all my lesson plans for elementary school and ideas and sub plans. It's um, Art Room Blog. Art Room, is it one word? Because I could Art type Room it. Blog. Yep. I have a card here. You can take a picture of it or screenshot it. Uh, artroomblog.blogspot.com. I'm old school. I've had it for a long time. I don't know if you can see it. Blogspot.com. Okay, I just put it in the chat. There it is. If you want to screenshot it. Blog.blogspot.com. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Yep. And I'm on Facebook, just as Lee Darter. Instagram. I live, I, I share way too much in my life. My husband can attest to that. He has no digital footprint. We are like total opposite ends of the spectrum. He has zero digital footprint and I'm like all over the place. <laughs> so yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, you guys could put your mics back on if anybody wants to speak. Speak. See, the tape just comes right off. It's so easy. Like when I learned how to do it, she goes, just tie it all up. It's, so, it's easy. And I'm like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? And the woman had the hottest glue gun I've ever had in my entire life. I think I still have a scar from it. I use low temp glue guns. I just want to give an appreciation for the uh, the general spirit of the workshop and just how dynamic, you know, and useful it is. Really fantastic community. And tonight's facilitation was awesome. Hey, thanks for joining us. Please come back. We I do at least one or two a month and um, I post them always on Facebook, or you can email me, guys, and I can add you to the mailing list every time we have a new session. Um, I send out the invite directly to the mailing list as well. And somebody asked where the videos are. Um, always on YouTube on the Nikata UFT channel. So if you want to be added to the mailing list, you can. I'll put my email here. You can just let me know. And um thank you so much for just email me at mndnspirit at aol.com i'm old school too <laughs> that's a hundred year old email um but thank you so much lee these are so wonderful and we got so many great suggestions from everybody on what direction to take this in with i, I even learned a lot there's some stuff that i'm going to start using yeah and I love the idea of those worry dolls for the SEL kids. That's really being pushed this year. I think that's perfect. Um, and the naming is also awesome. So it, it, it really gives them ownership. of. of well, also cre creating that backstory for it afterwards. Where does he live? Where does he go? What, no, what are, it, I love that. What does he eat? We may be old school, but I think Whistle is very new school. <laughs> Whistle is very happy to be part of our community now. I'm giving him some ears now because I just couldn't go without having ears on. Okay. I just posted the YouTube link to the channel um, again. So anybody that needs it, it's in the chat. You can actually uh click on that link and save it to your browser. Those are so great. Oh, those ears. What were the ears? Well, I think that I, I was going to say ears, but now that I have them on them, it, they look better as eyelashes. Oh. <laughs> it, it was uh, this. Very cute. It's that I got for a dollar forty-five. if I didn't mention Amazing. for the whole thing. <laughs> He's a very sexy beast, that whistle he is. 
so cute. See, now I'm pushing it. Like <laughs> you got to use that sparkly ball, but where? Where? I, know, I just wish it was a little smaller. I don't know if I could cut it in half, or it's going to blow up on me if I did that. Yeah. This is so fun. You could keep playing with it forever. And that's the great thing. That's why I got so addicted to it. I'm like, oh, if I did, oh, it just blew up on me. That's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. I should not have done that. Oh, well. Live and learn. Hair. Use a hair. Put hair on him. Or you could tie a bow around his tail at the end of the tail with that. Oh, yeah. Tube. I got this. There you go. That stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, oh, I could have done this. I look at this and I go through all the stuff. It's like, oh, I didn't even know I had that. I got to use that. So it's a lot of fun. And then just take a piece of string when you're all done and hang it around his neck. He gets a little necklace and he has a life. And he'll stare at you from yourself. <laughs> See, now I have to go shop jelly rolls. I, I have to start I cutting fabric. Yeah, I am compelled. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. Oh, Lee, thank you so much. I know you have been in, in a rough spot, and I appreciate you giving us your time, truly, truly. Honestly, I, I haven't thought about my leg in the last hour and a half, so I really appreciate the chance to share. Oh, absolutely. I might even hit, hit you up at a later time to do some felting with us. Oh, I would love to. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Maybe in time for like Valentine's Day. That could be fun. Sounds like a plan. Yay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you everybody you so for joining <laughs> us and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And um, hopefully we'll see you next week. And if not, enjoy the holidays and stay safe and be healthy. I feel good. If you, if you <laughs> make one, take a picture and send it to Steph and she can email it to me. I, I definitely okay. will. Okay. All Bye right. Me. Have a great Bye. night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lee. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. I'm going to crawl in bed now. <laughs> You've earned it. <laughs>